The alternative to being on the Lakers is not being on the Lakers. So if that is what Westbrook ultimately wants, what are the usual suspects here? Where could he wind up? Yeah, let me give you a timeline here. So Darvin Ham has met with Russell Westbrook on several occasions. He's described how he's used, you know, video clips and shown Westbrook exactly what he wants. Then Russell Westbrook had a call with Anthony Davis and LeBron James to sort of clear the air and get everybody on the same page, you know, talking about going to be on the team this year. And despite all that, Westbrook still split with his agent. So you start to look at what is Westbrook actually going here? Is he going to accept that role that Darvin Ham has laid out? Right now, Greeny, there's not a, a, a preponderance of starting point guard jobs in the NBA that would be interested in Westbrook via trade, or even if he would have been traded somewhere and gotten bought out, there's not a job for him to walk into, which I think is why Thad Fauche is talking about irreconcilable differences. I, I would assume he's explained that to Westbrook, and I can assume that maybe Westbrook isn't quite coming to terms with that, or at least is mulling not coming to terms with it. So I would say there's a close eye being kept on what, Russ, what Russ's next step is here. I, of course. And, and the one place there could be a point guard opening would be in Brooklyn if the Nets trade away their point guard uh, and Kyrie Irving to the Lakers. And, and, and that's, that brings us to this trade that everyone has had their eye on. It does not sound to me like you're suggesting you think that Russell Westbrook for uh, Kyrie Irving feels particularly likely. No, it's been discussed weeks ago and has in advance, but what, I, can't, I almost can't believe what I'm about to say. The Brooklyn Nets have had a good offseason. <laughs> in, in, in a vacuum, they have, they have gotten healthier. They have added supporting pieces. There's optimism that Ben Simmons is going to be better. And I think looking at the menu of options, the Nets are kind of like, you know, Kyrie, Kevin, take a look here. Um, what I will say is that nobody knows what Kevin Durant is thinking right now. Um, his communication with teammates and others in the league has been sparse. Um, I don't even think that the Nets, Greeny, have a 100% understanding of why Kevin asked for a trade. He, he, he spoke to the owner in Joe Tsai and gave a reason, but I'm not sure the Nets are 100% on the understanding of it. So I think really the next step in this, barring a, a team's change of heart to meet the Nets' price, which I don't see at this point on the calendar, I think we're going to have to wait to hear from Kevin Durant about how open he is to running it back with the Nets. And here we go as everybody breaks for summer, sitting, waiting for that to happen. So, so let me throw just something else into the conversation because I thought this was fascinating and, and I think it plays exactly off of what you're talking about. So Dave McMenamin, one of our top NBA reporters, was on the Low Post podcast, Zach's podcast, talking about a possible reason why Durant may have asked for that trade. This is what he said. There is a school of thought speaking to people around the league that they think that the Durant trade request wasn't actually about him getting out of Brooklyn. It was about getting Kyrie out of Brooklyn. But the reason why this thing is all kind of stuck in the mud right now is that the Nets will not make a major move like that with Kyrie until they are very 100% crystal clear that the true intention of Kevin Durant would be to move off of Kyrie in order to stay. Fascinating. It made some sense to me. Wendy, what do you think? I think there's a reaction in the league to trying to fill in the gaps of things they don't understand. And there's not a full understanding of Kevin Durant's motives here. There may be a terrifically great reason that Durant made this choice, but it hasn't been articulated anywhere. And I would say that if there was a market for Kyrie Irving, that would affect the Nets' reasoning more than anything. And the other thing I want to point out, Greeny, is that the one thing that we do know is that during the Kyrie Irving contract negotiations, which ultimately failed, and Kyrie picked up his option. He was in contact with Kevin Durant during that time. So while Durant openly said, because he said this on, a, on his podcast, Durant openly said he was talking with him but not influencing him. So I'm, I'm not sure that I 100% agree with what Dave said there, but in an absence of understanding, we certainly have a lot of conjecture. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.